Hey everybody, welcome to another interview episode of Thinking Outside the Long Box. I am always Gabe, uh, here with you talking with Jake Horowitz, who is uh, one of the principal actors in The Vast of Night, one of the shows we're going to be talking about. Uh, well, you probably already listened to us talk about it because we record these before. Never mind. I'm not going to think about it too much. But, uh, but Jake, welcome to the show, man. How are you today? I'm great. I'm I'm doing well. I'm in I'm in New York and uh, yeah, doing well. Super happy to to be here talking with you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to to chat with us. You know, with uh, coronavirus still being a thing, I don't know how busy your day is, but you, you <laughs> never know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it, it it comes and goes, but today looks like a a a, a slower, lazier day. So oh, more nice. than happy to to hang out. Yeah. So. Let's start with Vast of Night was uh, filmed in Texas. It was kind of created in Texas. It has like this kind of, you know, vibe of that part of the country. What was it like doing a movie, you know, outside of the typical New York or Hollywood uh, kind of acting slash movie making scene? Yeah, it was, it was so great. I mean, you, you, um, I think the the relationships that we made with the people in the town was so special and like everyone just really wanted to be a to be a part of it and we would like go over to dinner at or really breakfast for us because we were filming all night so we would you know start shooting at like 7 p.m and stay up all night so we'd go to people's houses for dinner and it would basically be our breakfast but you know it was like that kind of feeling everyone just jumped on board you know the like the, the the police in the town just like people would be running red lights on our crew and they would just like know it was us and be like oh cool <laughs> like it's it's those guys so we we just had a great relationship with the town and it was kind of magical because you know in that part of the world it it can feel a little bit older than new york certain you know what i mean like my my daily life is so 2020 and so quick and so fast pace and so being able to shoot it there just also sort of like brought us into a sort of different time period so it was pretty magical yeah so as you're as you're filming like largely at night you know doing these big you know overnight shooting is that to you know i assume that's to drive like the story and how it's taking place like over one night were there moments where you felt like it was so necessary to be in like that kind of dark, you know, physical space to like further the story. Yeah. I think, I think it was a great thing because it was one of the things that was totally born out of necessity. Like we only did it that way because there were so many exterior shots that needed to be in the dark that you couldn't like go back and forth between shooting the interiors in the day and the exteriors at night. Like you couldn't really flip it. So we just sort of had to do it all nights because it was such a uh, short shoot. And it ended up creating this feeling, I think, of, yeah, being like four in the morning and sitting at a desk with the phone and you just sort of feel the, the darkness and the <laughs> just sort of closing in. And um, I, so I, I think it had really sort of like artistic effects like you're talking about. And we ended up feeling a certain way because we were doing it, but it was totally born just out of we had to do it like that. You know, there's no other way. So this movie, like, obviously it's a science fiction film. It revolves around effectively an alien invasion of like a little town. Yeah. But it's also very subdued for like a typical science fiction film. You know, the special effects that are at the end, they're, they're, you know, they look great, but they're not like crazy over the top. Like this is not your your Will Smith alien invasion. This is uh -huh. like, something subtler and more quiet. What was it about, you know, this kind of contemplative look at at aliens and kind of crazy phenomenon that drew you into this role? Yeah, I think, I mean, I think just that that like a andrew was saying when we when we skyped um uh, before before i went out to shoot it he was like you know the movie's kind of like if if uh, richard linklater directed close encounters mm. and i i just really loved that <laughs> <laughs> i just think that's a great um it's like a great sandwich you know it's a great like bringing together of two totally different things that uh 
that just struck a chord with me and this idea of like, how would it, how would it happen if it really happened? You, you know, you wouldn't, it, it might not look the way we think it'll look and the feelings of sort of terror might not, you know, manifest in, I don't know, the classic like screaming shot of someone being like, ah, and the light never, you know, like it, I, I think that it's a movie that just really tries to take a, a, a different look at something that we think we know so well. Um, and there's just something exciting about that. And I think that Andrew has a great sense of like going quiet when you expect it to go loud and going loud when you expect it to go quiet and sort of playing with those expectations was something that I could like feel in the script and feel in Andrew's approach that I thought was really, just really smart and really interesting and I think works really well. So as the, the radio DJ, uh, you know, there's this experience that I have from when I was a kid. And I think a lot of people, you know, my age have this of like laying down in bed or like, you know, on a long road trip with your parents and the AM radio is on to coast to coast and you're hearing truckers call in about the alien they saw or the people talking about the ghost in the graveyard they saw, you know, and these people presenting like these paranormal phenomenon as reality over the radio did you do any kind of like research into like those kind of radio shows to prepare for this role yeah i did a a bunch of research more more kind of related just to the the time period and the way that the radio djs in the 50s and then like the and the you know people guys guys who loved rock and roll and who loved this sort of new music movement um i there's a lot of stuff on youtube and and um and 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 you know, just throughout the internet that i that i delved into but it was it was definitely about like finding this um like personality you know this guy who spoke in such you know idio idiosyncratic ways um and so yeah, a, a lot of the research was about that more than about like radio shows uh, throughout you know American history and like the kind of calls they would get and stuff like that. Just because I guess in preparing for it, it was like I don't think that Everett's um, he's probably he's probably gotten calls about things people see or anything, but he's always like there's never been anything like what <laughs> he experiences when Billy calls. Like it it is it like hits him in a in a place that he's not prepared for. Yes. So like, what's funny is the, there's even a line in the movie about it where the female lead tells you, why, why do you talk different when you're on the radio? And that's, that's cool. Like, you know, you hear, you hear those re- radio DJs from like the fifties and sixties who sound like a normal human when they're just talking in an right. interview, but on the radio, they're the big, you know, Dr. Demento, like blast the vocals out, you know, that, that stuff is, is cool. And it's cool that you, that you looked into it. You know, um, I, I had seen uh, looking, you know, researching your IMDB that you, it looks like you're in a remake of, of a Stuart Gordon film called Castle Freak. Yes, I am. Which is probably the opposite of like a contemplative piece about like alien invasion. Like the Stuart Gordon film, obviously I haven't seen your new movie, but the Stuart Gordon film is like, beyond over the top like you know there's there's monster wang and people getting eaten and like all (laughs) sorts of crazy stuff what were some of the differences working you know with this crazy over the top horror versus like this contemplative thought provoking science fiction yeah oh it's a great question what exactly were the differences beyond like everything (laughs) Um, probably a lot more screaming (laughs) so much more screaming but it's funny because like i don't know it's it's a very funny thing as an actor because you you know you you do things that are so different um in the way that they come out but in preparing for them it's almost like weirdly similar (laughs) like you just are really trying to think about who this person is and, 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 and the situation they're in and, you know, their history that has like led them to be the person that they are. It's like you ask sort of the same questions, but I guess the, I guess the goal of one of the goals, I guess, in acting of Vast at Night was like never to like, never to blow it too soon. Like don't, don't like freak out and be like, ah, alien, you know, like it's not over till you see the ship. 
in like really to try and like hold on to that. And with Castle Freak, I think the um, the the uh, what we were gunning for just had less to do with that. Like, because the audience um, knows about the monster. Like, we we thought less about not blowing it and more just about the the sort of human to human thing in the castle freak remake there's a you know whatever i'm not gonna i, I can't give too much away but like it's a right rematch now. so the relationships are kind of different and we thought a lot about you know just the the relationship between john and rebecca in a different way yeah that makes that's sense. awesome <laughs> it's it's funny when i saw that credit i literally just watched castle freak on shutter like maybe a week and a half ago no and so think you know and i just watched vast of night too so thinking of the two together i was like those movies could not be any more different from yeah. one another talk about talk about yeah the totally <laughs> opposite ends of the spectrum uh, so as an actor, do you like working like in genre movies? Like, do you think that it provides like any kind of like special freedom to you as an actor? Or do you find that, that, you know, it, it's easier to work with in any way? Um, I don't know that I would say uh, easier to work with. Anybody. I mean, I, I guess the thing that I've found is in, is in genre movies or horror movies or thrillers, whatever you call them, there's just always like a really it's just fun to act. Like you're always in a crazy situation, you know, which is just really, um, really fun. I, I've just sort of like the opportunity, you know, the questions that you get to ask yourself are not like, um, you know, it's, it's not like a guy at work and the cops come and they're like, have you seen the guy? And you're like, Oh no, like I didn't see him. You know, I don't know. <laughs> like it's, you're, you're, you're dealing with like huge, um, problems and situations so I've just found it really fun I don't know that I would say like you know better or worse is hard but I it just that I've definitely noticed as an actor that you're thrown into situations which are really exciting and <laughs> I like that so um Vast of Night obviously has gone to Amazon Prime uh you know it's a smaller independent film but like Prime gave it a pretty big push like I saw it in my in my suggestions, you know, obviously I watch a lot of genre film like science fiction, horror and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's going to turn up there anyways, you know, because of algorithms. But, uh, but Amazon gave it a pretty big push for like a smaller independent film. Do you think that, you know, having that Amazon Prime kind of motivation really helped uh, reach a different audience than you normally would have? Yeah, I think, I know, I, I, it's so funny because it's like, I mean, we just don't know any other way. Like, it's not, like, it'd be interesting if we were released by a different company and by and you could, like, see them sort of, like, how it would be different. But because, you know, we only have the Amazon model and it's been so great, like, they've, they've pushed it out to so many people and people who never have watched it, I think, are watching it and being surprised by it. And I, you know, I think that they, I mean, as a, as a company, obviously, as like a, as a platform, they have a great handle on how to, how to push movies and, and how to like, you know, get it into people's, onto people's screens. Um, and I think that it was great that we also got to play in, in some drive-in theaters. Cause I, I don't think that, you know, I don't think there's a substitute for going to the movies ever. I just think, it, you know, it's just a great, uh, I think the model of like releasing and, in theaters and then a couple weeks later or even at the same time on uh, on streaming platforms is a really cool way forward because there's there's benefits to both and like why not why not use both is kind of how I feel. Were you able to uh, attend uh, any of the drive-in theater screenings? I wasn't. Tragically, oh, I, they, 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 they chose uh, a bunch in, in the South and some in California, but there weren't any in the immediate New York area and I don't have a car. So it was like, <laughs> it's okay. I've seen the movie a bunch of times, you know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, we have a local drive in and I just had this like moment of how cool that would be. You know, we yeah. went, we went and watched Goonies a couple nights ago at the drive-in. What a perfect movie for that. And like, this is the same thing. Like imagine this double featured with some B sci-fi from the sixties. It'd be great. Like it's, yeah. it's a really cool idea. Yeah. Um, so like, you know, as you've gotten, you know, recognition and people talking to you about, you know, this movie, what are some of the things that you hear people say the most about it? Mm. 
Um, I guess I, I, I love when I, I love when I hear people compliment its uh, suspensefulness because I think that, um, I mean, I just take that as a, I mean, as a, you know, I think I take that as a compliment to everybody, but, but me and Sierra really worked with Andrew a lot in rehearsing on how to keep, keep suspense and not like I, I was, I was kind of saying before, not like blow it and, and sort of, um, keep that story alive in us. And I, so I, I just love when I hear that. I, it's so gratifying and like relieving to hear that it's sort of working the way that we had imagined. And I love when people like the dialogue and I love when people like the sort of rhythm changes of the movie that it goes from like super fast and you can hardly understand what's happening to like these long, slow um, scenes. And I, yeah, I, I guess those are some of my favorite things, but, but definitely when people respond to the dialogue, it's like, you know, because that's what drew me in at first. Obviously, reading it, I was like, oh, this is written by, this is genius. Like, hold on, like, I need to do this now. Like, I can't <laughs> wait. So I, I love when people, you know, sort of are, get on that train. It, it's interesting. I talked with Gail uh, Cronauer last night mm. uh, about the movie. And, you know, we talked a lot about language in it because she's an educator, you know, and because she loves Shakespeare and she loves those sorts of things like this really spoke to her in a lot of ways. Uh, I find it super fascinating that like this, um, this movie, hi, Hannah. <laughs> this movie is so much about language and it's so much about words and the script has managed to take exposition, which is normally really boring and really awful and frame it in such a way that you're on the edge of your seat for a black screen with a dude just talking or a scene where two people are just literally sitting and listening to an older lady give her whole story. And those are long drawn out pieces of dialogue that are intense in a way that you wouldn't expect for straight exposition. Did you enjoy working like kind of in that framework? Uh, like 150%. It was like one of my favorite qualities of the movie where <laughs> that it was just like um, the, the texture of the dialogue and the characters that keep the story moving is like so special. And I, I think reminiscent of like Coen Brothers, Wes Anderson, these sort of, you know, guys who write and direct their own stuff. To, you know, it's like a real quality they have that everybody in the movie has a texture and feels like they're from the same world in just a really special way. And, you know, as an actor, it makes those scenes like I loved doing the Mabel scene. It was like one of my favorite nights because it was so great to listen to, you know, like it, it, it takes a lot of the hard work off of your shoulders in a, in a weird way when you just sort of enjoy listening and then it's like your line and you're like excited to respond genuinely, <laughs> you know, like, and uh, so I think I had a lot of experiences like that shooting it. Um, yeah. It's, it's cool. Like it's so, like I said, so much of the movie is about, about language and about words, whether it be the alien language or the human language and the way people interact with each other. And it, it's, it's brilliant. Like it's great writing. It's great directing. And you as an actor and your other, you know, your fellow actors, you guys did bang up jobs on it. Uh, like I, my, uh, this, this is going to be part of a recording block. That's kind of about visually interesting movies. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about this one, we're talking about the cell, and then we're talking about blood machines, which is an absolutely ridiculous thing on shutter that if you haven't seen, you absolutely have to watch. I have it's seen. It's literally, it's literally the opposite of your movie. Like imagine <laughs> science fiction taken to like such disturbingly special effects laden levels that you can't look away. <laughs> right, right. Is it blood, blood machines? Blood called? machines. Yeah. <laughs> it, check it out. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know what I, what I found the, the most interesting about this is how, you know, the, the, the co-host that presented that we watched this was like, it's just really a fascinating visual watch mm -hmm. and in such a different way than other movies have done. And that's, that's really cool. Did you, um, you know, when, when you're working in it, did you realize like at the moment, like how 
texturally visceral like this movie was going to be like it, when when it was a finished product yeah definitely definitely i mean we were um we rehearsed for a week before we shot which was really a gift and doesn't always get to happen um especially in small independent movies um and uh so i think we were really uh like knew what it was going to take uh to to sort of make it make it work and give it that that like ease that i think me and sierra found and had so much fun with was that we you know we just sort of kind of knew what we were doing so it was it was easy between us and 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 that was there and if we were just like thrown into first day of shooting even if we were all memorized i think that like that chemistry and that understanding just wouldn't quite have been there and you know it was like i think that rehearsal is is game changing but i i would say that we really knew like you like reading the scripts you i at least at least I, I could tell what it was going to take totally. Like it was very clear. This was a movie that needed uh, people to be good with language and people to hold suspense and people to be, you know, to like, to be able to be sort of like still. Andrew talks a lot about, about stillness and like sort of calm and that, you know, suspense and terror can like set in. You don't always have to push it, push it out. But yeah, I think those things were clear from the beginning for us. It's awesome. So as we kind of get towards the end of our time, I know you have a few things that are in post-production or getting ready to come out, which is awesome because there's a ton of actors that we've talked to recently. They're like, nope, got nothing. <laughs> so uh, tell us a little bit about what you have coming uh, on the way. Um, yeah, so I have, like you said, uh, Castle Freak, which is the reimagining of the, the 90s, 90s horror film. Um, that Stuart Gordon did that I mean, we're not sure when it's going to come out now. It was supposed to be at a festival and, you know, we're just sort of, we're seeing where, where it's going to go now. Um, and then another film from this director, Mickey Reese, who's a director out of Oklahoma, who's awesome. And his movie, um, uh, climate of the hunter was making a lot of, uh, a lot of rounds of festivals and it's just great. This new one is called Agnes and it's, uh, sort of a, an exorcism film that takes a, a really hard left turn uh, that I think is really exciting. And it's from a, a Divide and Conquer and Quagmire, or the production company. Yeah. You are in exactly the kind of movies I like to watch. So, <laughs> so that's <laughs> awesome. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and Jake, how can people find like your social media? Keep track, you know, make sure they don't miss, you know, Castle Freak or Agnes because yeah. I plan on not missing them. <laughs> oh, right on! I, I I can't wait for you to to watch them. Um, uh, my Instagram is just uh, uh, Jake Horowitz ninety four, and uh, I I don't I'm not a huge uh, poster. I often feel like a bit of a, a bit of a leech. I'll like log on and I just look at other people's stuff and I don't, <laughs> I don't post that much, but, but I definitely post when, uh, you know, when, when things come out, I, I want people to, to know. So, so yeah, follow me there and, and, uh, yeah, keep in touch. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time, Jake. I hope you have a wonderful afternoon. <laughs> right on. Yeah. Thanks for talking. It was really fun. Uh,